Thank you very much, Alessandra. The floor is open for questions. It's a very rich set of presentations to end the day with. Yes. Uh, yes. Some of the panelists talk about the inno innovation concept, innovation processes, innovation products. How do you define, I mean, in the different projects you are referring to this, I mean, concept of, of innovation? Uh, what I want to say is that in some time, I mean, plastic was an innovative product, even a lot of, I mean, uh, used in the Mediterranean. And I would say also that it was also co-financed by the European Commission, all the studies for plastic, or for asbestos, or for other products. Innovative at the moment, but with impacts that we didn't know at the moment, negative impacts. Uh, even, I mean, in the green economy, we have, I mean, let's say, the wind the generators or the photovoltaics, all these kind of innovative products, but we don't, do we know the impact after the uh, uh, life? You know, this is always a problem with technology, so that uh, uh, one innovation maybe brings another disaster. Uh, but uh, uh, we are, uh, we want to have uh, sustainable solutions. And we understand that Mediterranean is a very delicate uh, uh, area because uh, uh, a lot of tourism, special, uh, spatial planning, uh, and uh, uh, a lot of uh, traffic, a lot of uh, uh, different things is happening on the Mediterranean. It is one of the most popular seas for, 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 for industry, for, for everything. And every, every, uh, every, uh, everything what we do we, could, we should think about this what will be the result of this not only the, the economic result but also we have to like the, the colleague said we have to uh, think about the environment about the effects on the environment because we will live in this area and we will not we, to, to poison this or, or to to make it an unpleasant uh, place for living no way on le voit même par exemple toutes ces trottinettes électriques c'est super ces zones émission mais si ça finit dans le Rhône euh, et qu'ensuite tous les matériaux se dégradent et évoluent la Méditerranée on n'a rien gagné quoi c'est pas évident d'anticiper euh, les conséquences environnementales de ces nouvelles technologie, de ces nouvelles solutions. Vous savez que vous parlez de la robotique qui offre peut-être plein d'opportunités. En même temps, la robotique, là aussi, est-ce que... Enfin, C'est pas simple. Il y, a, il y a des belles opportunités. On, on voit, on, on est en train de se lancer dans un projet d'éolien flottant euh, en mer. Euh, C'est difficile d'anticiper tout. Mais en même temps, il faut avancer. Est-ce qu'on a besoin de, de produire de l'énergie de manière plus durable que, euh, que le charbon ou que, euh, voilà, que d'autres euh, moyens de production. Donc il euh, y a des moments où il faut prendre des risques aussi et essayer d'avancer, mais il faut le faire de manière concertée en essayant de, de, et de manière réfléchie, en essayant d'analyser un peu euh, toutes les données qu'on a à notre disposition. Hein. Nous on voit par exemple sur l'éolien flottant, on pense que ça peut être une filière d'avenir, on pense que ça peut apporter des, voilà, un bénéfice. Bon, là, on pensait lancer le projet euh, trois éoliennes euh, au large d'un des ports de, de, de la région. Et il euh, bon, y a une association euh, qui a bloqué, enfin qui, qui maintenant nous attaque en justice euh, sur, ce, sur ce projet de développement industriel. Donc c'est complètement bloqué, ça pourra être bloqué pendant les je sais pas, deux, trois années à venir, tout dépend de, de, du contentieux. Et, et on risque d'avoir des industriels du coup qui perdent l'intérêt pour ce projet, puisque si on attend trop longtemps ben, et que rien ne se passe donc c'est pas simple et c'est vrai que la région elle essaye d'organiser de la concertation on a eu trois étapes de longues concertations justement sur le développement des, de l'éolien flottant en mer euh, et cette association là elle n'était pas du tout intervenue en plus elle n'était pas présente au moment de, aux, aux étapes de concertation et puis tout d'un coup au moment où on souhaite lancer le projet boum, euh, contentieux en justice euh, ça arrête tout le processus quoi c'est pas évident. Une petite association qui complètement euh, bloque un développement euh, industriel qui peut quand même être intéressant parce que c'est une, voilà, une nouvelle énergie. Pas simple, c'est ça. 
I think, Linda, you had a response as well. Uh, first of all, thank you for the question. It's a very complex question. If you allow me, I would. It's it's actually a double question. First, your question whether we have looked into the different forms of innovation. Yes, I mean, but there are many different uh, definitions. It's technology in innovation. It's disruptive. It is uh, social innovation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And and we we do look into that. And one of the novelties of the Future Horizon Europe program is the setting up of the European Innovation Council, where. Any idea, any brilliant idea, bottom up, can be funded. So that is something that hopefully will start in 21. Then you talk about the plastic and the impact of plastic. We have as well to be very careful. We cannot say plastic is bad. It's the how we use the plastic which is bad. I think that is something. We cannot eliminate plastic. We know as well from from economic studies that uh, the use of plastic in the world by 2050 will have three times more. So, but it is what type of plastic are we going to produce? Is it going to be biodegradable only on land or is it also going to be biodegradable in the sea? So we have now funded some of the really very interesting projects which are based on natural products like silk, like milk, where they produce now a new, new type of packaging, which are biodegradable both on land and on sea. And there are other projects in the pipeline, so I invite you, we have as well a big call out in Horizon 2020 now. <laughs> so so and there are many other initiatives, the fishing for fisher nets, and then the reconversion, the recycling. So it is very complex. but. We cannot put our head into the sand anymore. We have to do something. So that's where I think the collective responsibility and uh, as well our collective uh, work comes in very heavily. Thank you. Excellent question. Uh, I have another question at the back. <coughs> La mia domanda si collega un poco anche alla, alla domanda di Assonitis sull'innovazione sull no? e sull'impatto che l'innovazione ha sugli ecosistemi, perché poi se parliamo di sostenibilità il problema è proprio questo. Allora, eh, gli ultimi programmi, soprattutto della DG Ricerca e Sviluppo, eh, hanno parlato di innovazione e hanno tralasciato un poco la ricerca di base. Ecco, in futuro... Cosa si, cosa, cioè che ruolo avrà la ricerca di base? Cioè io eh, la domanda la faccio come se fosse un ricercatore, non sono ricercatori, i ricercatori spesso si lamentano che la ricerca di base viene tralasciata anche se poi sono bravissimi a mascherare la ricerca che fanno eh, come ricerca di base. Quindi però se vogliamo veramente capire e quale effetto ha una, uh, un impianto per la produzione di energia dal mare o uh, 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 la plastica uh, biodegradabile in mare se non conosciamo bene quali sono i funzionamenti degli ecosistemi è difficile poter arrivare a delle conclusioni certe un esempio, parliamo di microplastiche ma ancora noi non sappiamo l'effetto che le microplastiche hanno sulla catena trofica, praticamente sul, sui pesci che ci mangiamo, perché ancora sono state dedicate poche risorse e in effetti è ancora passato poco tempo per avere dei risultati scientificamente validati. Grazie. Thank you very much for that. Did, did anyone on the panel want to respond to that? I think it was I think it was directed to me. I, uh, I, mean, I will respond in, in English if you allow me. Uh, I start with your last thing for the microplastics. <coughs> yes, it is true, we don't know yet what is the effect, but we have launched the, the scientific advisory mechanism that the Commission has put in place, which is made out of very uh, famous and well known scientists. They are currently looking into a big scientific study which is going to hopefully come up with uh, some light 
where we are in terms of scientific challenges, well-known effects, etc., of the effects of microplastic on animal and humans. <coughs> so we hope that this will come out. You mentioned uh, another issue, which, allow me to say so, each time I speak uh, in a forum where are more researchers, they complain because there isn't enough money for for research. If I go to the investors, they complain there isn't enough money for investors. Now, let's not forget that one of the big success stories, particularly of Horizon 2020, but already, already with the Seven Framework Program, was the establishment of the European Research Council, which funds millions of millions of blue sky research. And that will continue as well in the future. So it's just it's a matter of competition. Yes. But also we fund per year through Horizon 2020 about 250 million per year only in marine maritime related for all the whole blue growth sector projects. 30% are innovation actions. 70% are really research actions. The problem is that the research results stay very often in the drawers of the project consortia. And that is something that we really try now to, to counterbalance. They are not shared. Websites, when the project finishes, one year after, disappear. Where can then the, these results be accessed? So that is one of the big, big issues I think that we have. We have thousands of research projects. The sharing of the knowledge, the sharing of the results is still lacking very much. So we have work to do, but also an appeal to all the academic researchers and the whole research community to make those research results available for others to be taken forward. Thank you. Uh, maybe I would ask you about that something. Uh, we can we came to the same conclusions, and that uh, a lot of uh, 2020 projects are, are finished in the drawer and uh, uh, in the dust. And uh, maybe these are some some brilliant ideas which only need to push from TRL six to TRL nine with with uh, good mechanisms. And for example, this uh, interact map we, we were trying to to, uh, to fetch the uh, H2020 projects and to see what is the potential, for example, for, for Mediterranean, to put in, in Interact as additional uh, uh, execution for, for, uh, and additional, uh, uh, put this in, in, into life, so capitalization. And, and I think this is very, very important. And also, like you said, uh, there is a, <laughs> a dark uh, <laughs> web page after one year. And, uh, if there is a, a, a common uh, platform when we, we have all this data, when we have all these uh, project results, and anybody can use it, then this is a quite a big, big source we, we, we have, we already have. Just we have to use it. Just use it in a proper way. <laughs> Thank you. I have one more question here, and then I'd like to pose an exercise to the, to the wider group. Yes. Uh, just to contribute in an old discussion, I think that uh, all these new products and the innovation, they have to start from the principles of system engineering. So what is the requirement in the beginning and what is the lifetime? In the lifetime, those requirements that are changing, because you mentioned before the plastics and the requirements that are changing. So we have to think in the European a union to create some agile approach. I mean, it's time that something is changing to see how this one reacts on the product and to find some ways to adapt all these things. And this will be a very good idea. I mean, in the plastics, because uh, happens to be aware of offshore uh, wind turbine. When we start uh, the wind turbine, everybody was uh, against. But for Greece, that I am coming from, from is the only solution because it is very deep in Greece and we cannot uh, say very permanent. But for me it is system engineering, lifetime and agile, agile procedure. If something happens, try to find some ways to recover.
Thank you. Those are useful key words. So I'm, I'm going to ask Paolo to put up the question that we have for all of you. We're going to ask you to turn to your neighbor one last time for today. Um, we've got the words adapt.